we have a really special presentation here. Uh, I want to start off with a clip. This was an interview that you and I did a couple of years ago. The, the clip has not surfaced because I know it's near and dear to your heart. Um, it had an unbelievable impact on me. So I'm going to just roll the clip and then we'll uh, deconstruct it. We had a great rival in the Pac-10, in the Pac now the Pac-12. And um, it would get just down and dirty. I mean, both teams loved to hate each other. I just loved it. And as our game grew, <clears throat> the fan base got larger. And this one team, their, their fans were vicious. We would go there, and they were vicious. And our kids, they didn't like that. So they rallied their boys and their girls from campus. And, and so we were going to go right back at them. And you know, the fan base was going to be our 10th man, so to speak. And uh, it got too personal. And I knew it. I could hear it. And I just remember going, ha, you know, paybacks, right? And what that looks like is allowing your fans to get right on one kid and just needle that kid for seven innings for whatever it is. Maybe it's how they walk. Maybe it's how they look. But in reflection, that, that's not UCLA. And I was at a point in my career where I was like, hey, paybacks. You know, suck it up. It's a tough life. You know, you're in the big time now. Zero margin for error. And fast forward, now it's the next year. And we played this game with that opponent. And this young boy came up to me after the game. And we had lost. We lost the game. And the stadium's almost empty. And he looked like he was about, I don't know, maybe 15, 18 years old. And he was the It was the sister of this kid that we were needling the year before. And uh, she had died of cancer. And he wanted to tell me that um, that rocked her world in a negative way. And he said, I just feel like it's, it's important for me to let you know that, that that rocked her world in a negative way. That was very hard for her to get over that. And uh, I just thought you would want to know. Changed my life. When you see that, what do you think? Well, to relive it is like uh, you, I'm in a place where you have an opportunity to reflect and you don't get to unring that bell. You don't get to, re you don't get to recoup that. And it makes you think about what you're doing in that moment and how many blind spots you have. So when I relive that moment, not relive the moment of telling the story, but reliving the moment of coaching at that point in time and being so myopic and self-absorbed that you can create, I call them now conditional values, that you justify what you do and how you do it. So it's conditionally you have your values where your values show up and then sometimes they don't. And on those days, they didn't show up. And then I had that opportunity to be recalibrated, to reset my norm, and it was powerful. What would you hope coaches would take away from that? I think for me today is to walk away and be intentional about what you're not right now because you're in a position where you're so obsessed with success and what it looks like. But when you're done, whether you win a title or not, you're going to reflect on the things that you didn't do if you're a normal human being. And you just have control to be intentional 
about your blind spots. And those blind spots can be eliminated if they're driven by awareness every single day. And talk about the environmental forces that make it tough to see that awareness. It's difficult because of the, this, this is a passion we chose. None of us do this to, for the money. If you, if, for most of us, we don't do it for the money. And you have so many forces that are defining your success. And yet the lifelong impact as a great leader is about how you change the belief system of your student athletes. That's what you're going to hope you do when you're done. You're going to hope they come back and say, you taught me belief. But when you're in it, you're grinding the X's and O's, and you're grinding against the media, and you're grinding against that bottom third parent, right, that second guesses your every move. And if we could build today a, a moment so you can be intentional to say, what are my blind spots? What's that one thing I could get better at that will allow my student athletes to come back and say, hey, you know what, I just want to thank you because you created the conditions for me to believe in myself and allow me to go out and influence others because that is what you're going to value when you sit in this chair because I kind of represent your future when you're done because I'm done. Talk to me about that because it's, it's just like the everything undermines what you're trying to do a lot of times in this competitive landscape. Definitely, and I think this generation of coaches, no matter how old you are, but if you're, if you're coaching in this generation, we have to recalibrate our thinking that you have, I've got kids that are weak sauce, and I've got grinders. And there's no in between. And that's not the world anymore. I know this for a fact. It's not the world anymore. But when you're in it, you got the kids that can handle the pressure and the kids that can't. And it's not that simple anymore. And even though that sounds kind of like a downer, I just want to traverse the country and tell everybody that make sure, you know, you know we were talking earlier about the line, like you, great coaches know where to find the line, right? But there's a lot of assumption that goes on about, oh, she can handle this line, and she can handle that line. In my experience, because I'm now with the, the youth, that line is really blurry. Mm -hmm. 